I wouldn't grow a crop without podchatter resistance now. So we grow all seed rate really because uh, uh, there's not a lot of other choice for us as an autumn sowing break crop on a purely arable farm. Um, yeah, we, we, can, we do have some spring break crops, but as an autumn sowing break crop, there's not a lot of choice this far north. Our oil seed rape as a crop has been a part of rotation now for quite a long time. Um, rotation is mostly uh, uh, revolving around uh, uh, first wheats as best we can. So we'll have an oil seed rape followed by a first wheat, uh, followed by a spring break crop, followed by first wheat, and then spring barley, and then winter barley, which is essential for getting oil seed rape back in the ground again here. So our rotation is a six course rotation, that has changed a bit, it, we were five course and we've put all seed rope out to one in six now, um, that has affected the area a bit, it's come down a bit, but it's been fairly stable now for five or ten years at around about 45 to 50 hectares. So our current stra establishment uh, strategy has evolved over a, a number of years now, but it, re it, it, it revolves around uh, a, a deep time cultivator. Uh, and then uh, a set of coulters behind that which drill the seed uh, and we also have a liquid applicator putting liquid fertiliser on down the spout right next to the seed at the same time. And that's, uh, it's a form of what I think is nicknamed subcasting but we would have been doing that before the name was invented I would think now. So we are a, a, a not a conventional oil seed rape grower, we haven't been for quite a long time, it's all hybrids. Um, and the, the principal reason for that uh, is around its vigour, which is absolutely essential to us. Uh, hybrid vigour is, is critical, particularly in the autumn for us. Uh, and not getting, a, I don't particularly want all seed rape to get away very quickly in the spring, because we can't often travel to be able to keep up with it in the spring. So it's particularly autumn vigour is absolutely crucial uh, to make certain we get a decently established crop before the winter closes in. Uh, in terms of varieties in the ground, this year we have um, Aurelia, Ambassador and uh, INV 1155 uh, in roughly equal portions. Um, so uh, best performing varieties are uh, uh, ones which do uh, get on and go in the autumn without any doubt. Certainly the ones in the ground at the moment have done that this year. Um, so our biggest challenge for growing all seed rate really revolves around getting it away in the autumn. Um, winter barley harvest for us tends not to start until the beginning of August. And uh, by the time we get to the middle of August, we've often still got straw lying. Uh, August here is the wettest month of the year. So getting a crop in the ground early is always a challenge for us. Um, and then looking after it in terms of, of slug protection in particular. So we're heavy clay soils, we're cold soils. Slugs is one of our biggest enemies. Cabbage stem flea beetle for us has not been a, the significant problem it has further south anyway. Um, and pigeons we can deal with uh, uh, with you know, bird scarers and things uh, uh, mostly. Another reason for growing hybrids is because of uh, pigeon uh, issues during the winter months and hybrids will recover from that. Pod shadow resistance uh, is, uh, in my mind, a very highly valued trait. So uh, uh, if we look at the, the number of things that I look at on a recommended list in terms of variety selection, um, uh, light leaf spot resistance is crit critical. Autumn vigour, as I've already mentioned. Pod shatter, I wouldn't grow a crop without pod shatter resistance now, having seen the benefits of it. I still use uh, uh, a pod stick at, at desiccation, but the combination of the two has provided a really robust crop in the past for uh, uh, you know, making sure that it goes to the combine. So our, uh, our spring crop nu uh, nutrition canopy management revolves around uh, trying to get on the ground early with, um, with the crops uh, as best we can. Um, and uh, that, that's really part of, partly setting it up in the autumn so that you've got a decent crop in the first place. Uh, because then you can get forgiven for not being on when we should be. But the, the, the spring nitrogen uh, uh, regime is about little and often as best we can um, and about not having, I don't want a massive canopy and I definitely don't want a canopy full of pine trees, I want a canopy full of oak trees. So um, if I can be forgiven for using my grubby hands here, I'm looking for not a canopy that looks like that but a canopy that closes in like that so that we've got, a not, we've got lots of podding towards the top of the canopy without having a, a tall stalky crop.